Today we're going to be looking at GPT-4 Autocoder and Self-Improver Streamlit app and review its code. First, you have to enter your OpenAI API key and you can choose your GPT engine 3.5 Turbo or GPT-4. You can enter an idea in this text input box or leave it blank and GPT-4 will create a suggestion for you and code it. Let's just leave it blank and then we select a number of iterations for improvements. Let's just click on two and generate code. Here is our first iteration. It's creating a password generator. It just created a generate password function and actually ran it in multiple occasions. And now it's going to improve on this. We're waiting for the iterations. Here is our second improvement. It actually explains itself on what improvements it had produced. It actually got a user input right here and kept the generate input. Right here, it says edit a function to get user input, refactor generate input to include error catching, such as here. And this is the final version, final iteration. As you can see, that added quite a lot of stuff. You don't have to use it with an idea. You can actually use it with code. You can paste your already existing code here or type it out. Just to demonstrate, I've just typed a simple print statement and I've selected five iterations. And here is our incoming code. This app is designed so that it will add additional features to your code. It will add error catching, such as it has done over here. And it will also try to debug any errors. As you can see, this is the third iteration. It put everything in a uh, try and accept block, it included uh, user. And in the final version, it explains that it made it more concise and readable, added error catching, kept the user input. And this is simply how it works. I'm going to make the code available for my Patreon supporters. This code will be available to the first tier if you'd like to download it. Link to my Patreon and also the online app will be available in the description. Try it out yourself. Try to run it yourself as well. It's up to you. So for this, we have two files. One is the main self improve class file right here. We're going to take a look at that and our Streamlit app file, which runs the Streamlit interface. Let's begin with our Python class for GPT-4 autocoder. You have to pip install Streamlit and OpenAI for this to work. Our class GPT-4 autocoder receives an API key from the Streamlit and the GPT engine choice. And we set the API key right here. And then we get a question from the Streamlit app to whether an idea or a code sample, which you have provided. And then we are making a chat a completion call to OpenAI's API with the engine of your choice. And we have a system message which says you're a helpful Python coding AI who will generate code and provide suggestions for Python projects based on the user's input or generate ideas and code if the user doesn't provide an idea. Start the code block with a Python word. This is, way, this is our way of trying to parse it. And right here, we're actually trying an accept block right here to try to parse the response. So when we receive the response, such as this, then we simply print it for information purposes. And then we try to find the triple backticks and at the very end and get everything before that. So as to remove the triple backticks in the end. And then we are splitting at the first Python. And then we're getting the rest of the code. And if this doesn't happen somehow, if the API returns the uh, a response which doesn't which this parser will fail to parse then we actually try up to three times and if it fails all three times then we print an error message and this is pretty simple and then we have a method called get project idea from the user input and if that's the case if user has entered nothing then we return for the prompt generate a python project idea first the idea and then provide a sample code and then if the user has provided an idea then we say generate code for a python project or whatever the user has inputted. This part is unnecessary. We can actually just delete that. Or just comment it out. This was from the earlier version of this app. Let's take a look at the Streamlit code right here. So for this, we have two files. One is the main self improve class file right here. We're going to take a look at that. And our Streamlit app file, which runs the Streamlit interface. Let's begin with our Python class for GPT-4 autocode. You have to pip install Streamlit and OpenAI for this to work. Our class GPT-4 autocoder receives an API key from the Streamlit and the GPT engine choice. And we set the API key right here. And then we get a question from the Streamlit app to whether an idea or a code sample, which you have provided. And then we're making a chat completion call to OpenAI's API with the engine of your choice. 
And we have a system message which says you're a helpful Python coding AI who will generate code and provide suggestions for Python projects based on the user's input or generate ideas and code if the user doesn't provide an idea. Start the code block with a Python word. This is way. This is our way of trying to parse it. And right here, we're actually trying an accept block right here to try to parse the response. So when we receive the response such as this, then we simply print it for information purposes. And then we try to find the triple backticks and at the very end and get everything before that. So it's to remove the triple backticks in the end. And then we are splitting at the first Python and now we're getting the rest of the code. And if this doesn't happen somehow, if the API returns a response which doesn't, which this parser will fail to parse, then we actually try up to three times. And if it fails all three times, then we print an error message. And this is pretty simple. And then we have a method called get project idea from the user input. And if that's the case, if user has entered nothing, then we return for the prompt, generate a Python project idea, first the idea, and then provide a sample code, right? Uh, and then if the user has provided an idea, then we say generate code for a Python project for whatever the user has inputted. This part is unnecessary. We can actually just delete that. I will just comment it out. This was from the earlier version of this app. Let's take a look at the streamlit code right here. First, we import streamlit and we import from our main self-improve class, the GPT-4 autocoder. We are importing this class right here and all its methods. You do have to pip install streamlit in OpenAI, as I have mentioned. And we are setting a page config title to be GPT-4 autocoder and the title to be GPT-4 autocoder and self-improver. We are creating a sidebar contents are displayed here. The title for the sidebar is settings. We have an input box for getting the API key. And then we are setting the API key with the sd.session state. So it will persist throughout many interactions with this app. Then we have a radio button set up for two different choices for the engine. And here's our here's the links to my social platforms and also my to my Patreon. Feel free to change this if you use this. And we assign the autocoder to be the GPT-4 autocoder. Autocoder receives two arguments, API key and the engine choice. And then we have a user input. This is just an uh, explanation for the user input and a help box, help uh, explanation. Help in Streamlit is displayed with these little question marks. If you come, if you scroll, if you bring your mouse cursor over it, then information will pop out. This is good to know. And then we have the code input. We say, of, of course, uh, paste your existing code here. You can see this is for the idea and this is for the code. So we are creating those streamlit elements, user input and the code input. And then the number of attempts is going to be a number input, such as this. This is going to determine how many iterations of improvements we are asking for. And then we are creating a button to generate the code. We are assigning, if, you don't, if there is no API key, then we are uh, giving a warning to the user to put their API key. And then we have a spinner element, which will say generating code. Let me demonstrate that when I click on here, this is the spinner element just indicating to the user that we're working in the background. And if a user has inputted code, then we say existing code is the code input. And then we start a for loop. And because we have, we now have the number of attempts from the user input, then we change the GPT-3 question or the prompt to the current code is, and we give it the existing code. And then we say improve the following Python code, implement new ideas if necessary, including error catching and bug fixing. Then the rest of it is for parsing purposes. Then we get a response using our class that we have imported, GPT-4 autocoder. We give the API key engine of choice, and we use this AskGPT method, and we give that to the question. This is the method that we're using from our class, AskGPT. It says GPT-3. I forgot to change it. Anyway, it's using either 3.5 or 4, depending on your choice. This is just a typo on my end. Don't worry about it. Then we say existing code is now equal to the response because we're going to do iterative recursive operations. We have to change that. The first instance of the existing code was the, whatever the user had inputted. But now our existing code is going to be whatever is returned from GPT. Then we just simply write iteration of whichever attempt is completed. Then we just write it with st.code streamlit element on the screen. Then we say else, meaning if the user hadn't inputted code, uh, and then if there is a user input, because the user, uh, in this case, the user had actually input an idea, 
then we just simply call GPT autocoder again. But this time we are putting get project idea as the user input. As you remember, our get user input will return us the appropriate prompt or the question whether if a user had entered an idea in this case or not. And this is it. And if a user didn't enter the idea, then we sent the project idea as a blank string. Then we get a response again from the GPT and we write that code on to display it. And after that, we up to however number of attempts that the user had specified, such as in this number input right here. Then we ask the question to the again and again to GPT. The current code is whatever the response is, right? And we are asking it to do the exact same thing. Implement new ideas, including error catching and bug fixing. Then we get the response again. So this is going to be recursive. And we are doing it again. And we are just writing the code. So this is it. This code will be available to my Patreon supporters. Link is in the description. Like I said, this is available online through this link. I'll have the link in the description. You can use it right away or you can run it yourself. Okay. All you have to do is start a terminal. And then in the terminal, with this arrow button, start a command prompt. Make sure you're in your right environment and whatnot. I'm just using this one. And then you have to type uh, streamlit run and the name of the file, in this case, gpt4 underscore st underscore app.py. Here it is in all capitals, but it doesn't matter. It's not sensitive to that. And then if you just run this from your working directory, then the local host will pop out and your interface will pop out. Now you're running it on your local computer. Here we go. And you can do the exact same things. If your browser doesn't pop out, then you can just copy paste this local URL or simply control click it. And then it will open a new window with that localhost 8501. I hope you enjoy this. So this is a lot of fun. I'm going to making I'm going to be making more videos on this because I also have a version which does parallel calls. And I have another version which actually saves the files directly into your working directory. Yeah, I have made another introduction video for GPT-4 autocoder. I'll put this link in the description as well. I also build an auto website coder. This is interesting too. And I also have another video, GPT-4 API with streaming responses and UI designs, both a streamlit gradio and HTML, CSS, JavaScript front end. I'll put these three videos in the description if you want to check it out. But I definitely recommend the first GPT-4 autocoder video. Thank you for watching. I hope you'll make good use of this project, uh, change it and adapt to your own purposes. Uh, take care and see you in the next one.